It is a nationwide movement that's making its way to Colorado, specifically to Boulder. A group of high school students in Boulder meeting with the city's Human Relations Commission to talk about their findings on why 16-year-olds should be allowed to vote. Denver 7 Sally Mamdu spoke with the group to find out what it would mean for Boulder's youth. 18-year-old Boulder High School senior Leo Greer is just old enough to vote, but he wants his fellow 16-year-old classmates to have a say when it comes to local elections. A lot of the local policies affect this 16 to 18 demographic, maybe even more than other demographics. Greer is part of a nationwide movement called Vote 16 USA that's campaigning for cities to lower the voting age from 18 to 16. So far, these two cities in Maryland are among the first to allow 16-year-olds the right to vote. Studies have shown that um, voting is habitual. If you vote in one election, you're 50% more likely to vote in the next election. And Greer says if 16 year olds vote early, voter turnout will increase in the 18 to 24 demographic, which is typically the least likely demographic to vote. A lot of people would argue 16 year olds, what do they know? Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about that? That's uh, We get that one a lot. Greer says most local policies in Boulder, like sugary drink and back taxes, impact 16-year-olds. At 16, you know, students are beginning to work, they pay taxes, they can drive. So a lot of the issues that would be in a local election are issues that do affect 16 to 18-year-olds. That was Sally Mamdu. All right, let's talk state house now. Marianne Goodland of the Colorado Independent is joining me now. We had a couple of state lawmakers here last week wrapping up the legislative session for us, giving us their summary of it. They were talking about the possibility of a special session. That's not happening now. That is not going to happen. The governor announced on Friday that he was not going to bring lawmakers back to deal with some of the issues that he had mentioned about a week or so ago that he was interested in looking at were he to call a special session. And transportation really was top of mind for the governor. when That he was the driver. That really, that. that really was the driver for this. The legislature could not agree on a transportation bill that would have um, allowed the state to bond for about $3.5 billion in road and bridge projects and some transit and mobility options. So when we talked to him a week ago that came out of his mouth very quickly and led everybody to think well he must be serious about this but in the intervening time um, we've heard very little about whether or not there was even a deal in the works and and to for a su successful special session you really need to have all your ducks in a row sure. before you even start that that keeps the amount of money that the taxpayers pay for these things which is around twenty five thousand dollars a day down to a minimum. They can get everything done in three days. So people sitting at home are saying, all right, how are we going to get our roads fixed? I mean, they only allocated, what, $1.88 billion? That was, and that was in the hospital provider fee right. bill. But out of that $1.88 billion, only about $1.1 billion would have gone for CDOT's sort of master list of, of transportation projects. And that leaves him short over $2 billion. So in into the rescue comes the Independence Institute and the Colorado Contractors Association. And one of the reasons that, that we believe the governor wanted to have a special session if, if he had taken that route was to sort of head off these ballot measures at the pass. Ah. The Contractors Association and the Independence Institute both have their own ideas about how to fund transportation. The Independence Institute wants to do it with existing state revenues. The contractors want to do a sales tax similar to the proposal that was offered during the session. Both of them are statutory, which means that if they get all the way through the process coming to a grocery store near you. <laughs> so we will see and watch them battle it out over the next couple of months, but likely Correct. we will see this on the November ballot is what you're saying. It, if they get the signatures and there's no reason to expect why they couldn't, this is a huge issue. Um, people statewide are interested in it. And the governor still wants to see this problem solved this year, although this is not his preferred method for, for seeing it done. The state energy office, I thought, also was tops on his list. It was among the four items that he mentioned when he, when he was talking about this last week. And what happened is that a bill to uh, reauthorize the funding for the state energy office failed to get through the, the legislature, got held up in the, in the Republican Senate. There's enough money to keep the office open past July 1st, but it's at it's a bare much, bones. very yep. bare bones. Yep. They're going to have to reduce their staffing from about 24 to 10. But the governor does have other options for the financing of this office, and that includes the state budget. He could 
do a line item veto. It would be very unusual, but he could do a line item veto of some program or, or something that's in the state budget that frees up the money that he would need for that energy office. So right now the governor has a whole lot of bills to sign, such Many. as some highlights. Uh, the budget probably tops that. Um, he has the provider fee bill to sign. That, that'll that be coming up sometime between now and about June 8th or 9th. All those, any bills that he's going to sign or veto, he has to take that action within 30 days of the end of the session. So overall, a successful legislative session, would you say? Very. Um, the governor made the point that he thought this was the most successful session that he's seen since he's been governor. And I wouldn't disagree with that. Uh, there have been a lot of major issues that the legislature took on and even for the measures that didn't pass like transportation mm -hmm. the willingness to reach across the aisle and come up with bipartisan solutions really was a, a big step higher than than we've seen in the last couple of well, years. Well we know you've been covering the legislature for a long time so we know of what you speak. Thank you Marianne so much. Appreciate You're welcome. it. welcome. Alright when we come back we are talking about school lunch nutrition standards. Stay with us.